What up? What up? What's up, y'all? This will be the last video y'all ever watch about compressors. About audio compressors, plug-in compressors, analog compressors, whatever compressor, air compressors, whatever. The same rules apply to trying to increase the dynamics of a sound. The same rules apply across the board because everybody and their mama, everybody and their mama think that a compressor is made for music. The original compressors were not made for music. The original compressors were made to make sure that the signal doesn't overload when you send it over a line to someone else because it is still a electrical signal. It's still an electrical signal, so you still have to manage its voltage. And if it goes over that voltage, then it becomes distorted. I.e., if you talk over a telephone line, you need a compressor to control that feed. I.e., if you send a message over radio, you need a compressor to control that feed. So that's what it was originally used for, not to create some type of musical balance. That ain't what it fucking used for. So all y'all motherfuckers out there that's misjudged thinking that like, oh yeah, I use a compressor because I'm trying to make it sound more musical. That's some fucking bullshit. That's some fucking bullshit. Here's what I'm finna open Pandora's box. I'm about to tell you what all the pros won't fucking tell you. A compressor, if it ain't used to control the dynamics of the actual sound and not take away from the sound, then why the fuck am I using it? So all y'all putting compressors directly on signals, I don't know what the fuck y'all doing because I don't think y'all have studied compressors and what compressors do. First of all, the attenuation of every compressor, meaning the attenuation, meaning the timing that it takes the signal from its peak and the threshold and trying to move it back to its threshold based on a ratio, a time uh, constants uh, setting of an attack and a release time to lower its uh, voltage, lower its signal, lower its energy, lower its frequency, lower everything. You don't know what the fuck the goddamn compressor is doing to the signal when it lowers it in timing and it lowers it at a certain rate, you don't know if it's cutting into the, the, the base of the signal. You don't know if it's cutting into the highs of the signal. You don't even know if it's cutting into the mids of the signal based on what signal it is. Most y'all motherfuckers just out there compressing every fucking thing. And y'all shouldn't. What you should do is, and here's the secret, compress on the side. Compress on the side. It's like eating ribs. You want to get ribs right off the grill. And then you want to have your selection of barbecue sauce. You don't want to put the barbecue sauce right on the ribs when they on the grill. And then everybody like, well, damn, I ain't want that barbecue sauce. I, I kind of wanted this barbecue sauce or this barbecue sauce. So when you mix in something that's compressed, use with it. Whatever compressor you use, Veramute, Tood, uh, SSL, uh, 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 Solid State Compressor, VCA Compressor, whether you're using um, 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 a digital compressor, whether you use compressors inside a computer that emulate all these things that I just named, it don't matter. What you need to be doing is doing it in parallel and then mixing it back in to not cut into its peaks. You can keep the original image of the sound and then that way you don't tamper with the original image. What you do is you add to the sound's RMS to add to that low end of what you already want to do. You don't want to cut the peaks down. You just want to take the compressed sound and you want to add to the original sound to increase its RMS. And if anybody out there got that, then you can use this. If you didn't get this, then so be it. I don't even care. I'm just saying it's slick. I'm just trying to um, shoot you some game. Parallel on the side. Don't ever put compression on, directly on the signal. Always compress on the side and then mix whatever the compressed signal is that you did, whether you compress it to high hell or whether you compress it lightly. Mix it back in with the original signal to your taste. And every taste is everybody's taste is going to be different. That's why this is going to make this beneficial to everybody out there that's using compressors. Do not compress directly on the signal. I don't give a fuck if it's a 
digital compressor, an analog compressor, or whatever compressor. The same rules apply. You don't know what the fuck that compressor is doing. So what you want to do is, you want to do the same thing that they doing to every compressor right now. What they doing to every compressor right now? They putting a 50-50 mix knob on it. Why is that? Because that's the original way you really was supposed to be compressing actual musical instruments and actual music. You wasn't so supposed to be affecting its original signal, its original image. That's not what you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to be adding to the original image and keeping the original flavor of the original image and adding to that and pulling up that those 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 smaller sounds that you can't hear and bringing the sound closer to you. That's the significance of a compressor to bring the sound closest to you, but you don't want to you don't want to subtract from the sound to turn to try to post game to bring the sound closer to you. No, 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 no. You attenuate the, 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 the side chain of the sound. You get the sound to be a solid brick. That's the sounds RMS. You lower that. You take the other piece of the sound, which is the greater part of the sound, which is the, which is the original signal, and then you add into that, and you increase the lower end of the sound without affecting the top end of the sound, and you and you keep your original image. Thus, you have this bright sound, but effective sound, but full sound. So this would be the last video y'all motherfuckers watch on compressors. Period. You watch this video and you get what the fuck I'm saying, You it won't matter what compressor you use. You will listen to the compressor, you'll use the compressor to it to its to its limit, and then you will pull it back and you will feel like, okay, I got me a brick, I got me a good ass brick, I got my original sound, let me slowly mix in. I don't give a fuck if it's 5%, 10%, 20%, 30%, 40% in. You mix back in and you give it the taste that you want. You leave it at that, and we Gucci, we good. This is the last video you gonna need to watch on compressors. Don't let them fool you. Whatever new compressor they got, whatever old compressor they got, use the same method. Guess what? Everything gonna be kind of the same. You gonna understand why different compressors do what they do because you are gonna be using it in a, in a different fashion in the right way. Holler at me. If you don't agree or you disagree or you like what I, uh, uh, I'm saying, Tell me what you think down below. I'm out. <laughs>